Saturday night, 17 December 2022, and as you can see, I'm in the darkness. Load shedding on a Saturday night, starting at 9 o'clock for 4 hours. What the fuck is that? How does this make sense? I did that video on uh, the ESCOM issue and asked the question whether it was technical or political. From many of the things that I've seen after I've made that video and comments that I've heard, there's a lot of politics at play. The thing that is the most fucking disturbing is the unbelievable volumes of our coal that are on trucks on the road to Richards Bay and to Maputo. Fuck no, somebody is making a shitload of money somewhere. And it is time that someone start asking the fucking question. Why the hell does the South African government not insist that the Europeans pay in rents for our coal? At least that will do our currency good. But no, the fuckers are busy with side deals. These politicians has got way too much power, way too much power and leeway. And I look at that circus there in Joburg, guys, we have to put a stop to this. I've asked the question on Twitter earlier. It's time for a regime change in South Africa, but I'm going to do a separate video on that. For this video, and this is another stir the fucking pot. I'm going to talk about black people. They're forever on this fucking apartheid wagon. It is time that they go and look at their black hate shit. And you spell that hate H-A-T-E because that is what they have. These blacks hate other blacks. They hate blacks that try to improve their lives. The moment a black guy starts a business and starts to change his environment and grow and become better, the rest, they turn on, me, on him like a pack of fucking hyenas. It is absolutely stunning. The problem is that black guy that made a change and a decision to create a better life for him and his family. These other fucking racist idiots, low IQ, 30% pass, idiots. They accuse him of trying to be white. For fuck's sakes, development and growth is white to them. They don't understand it. Our race also started off with fuck all on this earth and worked ourselves to where we are. And this black hate is something that nobody talks about and nobody wants to address it. And at this time that we address it, black hate is real. It is real. Look at this meme. When everything goes wrong, but you are already used to it. How true is that? Cynical. Cynical. Now, this is the tweet that triggered, this, uh, triggered me to do this skip mark. This high school student used his savings to start his own spaza shop. And can you, for a moment... Try and imagine the joy in that young man's heart. The pride when he looks around that little shop of his. Try and imagine it. I can imagine it because I was the first generation in my family that started my own business and did not work for a salary. And I can under, I started off my first little business was, I'm not going to talk about the shit I did when I was at school, 
because that's actually illegal. <laughs> but my first business after I left school was a photographic studio. A small little studio in a basement under the old Cinerama there in Pretoria. And man, I was so proud of that shop. But when you look on Twitter, in this thread where this guy's story was told, the fucking hatred from other blacks was nauseating, to say the least. And then there's this, these people there that you can somewhere see clearly. They don't have a fucking clue what they are talking about and they try to make clever fucking comments. Idiots! All fueled by hatred. After 94, for me, I am a guy that is extremely committed to small businesses. And when I saw how the population in the black townships allowed foreigners to hijack the spazas, I was stunned. I couldn't believe it. I just could not believe it. I said to my foreman one day, we were traveling through a rural area and you could see these spaza shops and clearly it was foreigners running it. And I said to him, and he was my friend, he was not only my foreman, he was my friend. He, we came a long way and sadly I lost him last year to the pestilence. But the fact remains, I said to him, why are the people allowing foreigners to take their small businesses and take the opportunities? And he couldn't answer me really. He couldn't really answer me. I was absolutely annoyed when I saw that. The black citizens threw away a great opportunity. Now look again at this young man. Now think for a moment about it. Say within a week, two weeks, maybe a month, he realized that he cannot run the shop and do the tasks on the back end to keep the shop going on his own. And he employs one person. One. And his business grows. Now, if you look at that image, you will see there on the back of the shelf, there's cooking oil and there's fish and there's milk and there's things like that. Now, think for a moment. His neighbor that doesn't have transport, sees this cooking oil next door and she looks at it and she decides, well, this is right next to me. The oil is now close. Let me start my own little business. And she starts baking omaguenia, fit cooker. And what is that? What does that mean? That means suddenly there's a second person feeding off this guy but also becoming economically active. And she starts baking a maguena. Then after a week or two weeks or a month, her business is doing well, and she starts putting fillings in. She starts using the fish that she can get from this guy and so forth. And all of a sudden, she, under, she finds out that she can't cope on her own anymore, and she needs an assistant, one assistant. And what has happened there? Two people has entered the entrepreneurial market and two jobs was created. Two jobs. Now just for the hell of it, <clears throat> I did a video on small business in Russia. If you take America, it is a massive economy. But this might shock you. 40% of their GDP is generated by small businesses. 98 million people is employed in small businesses in America. In Russia, in Russia, the small businesses contribute 20% to GDP. 
And the Russian government is dead set on growing that because they know small businesses create jobs very fast, very quick. And in Russia, the unemployment figure is 4%, 3%, three, between 3 and 4%. Think about that. South Africa, it's 45%. And if you really count the real numbers, it's more closer to 60%. The big problem is there's a lot of those people that is unemployed that are actually unemployable. Now, this guy starts his little spaza and he inspires his neighbor to start her little Amagwenya operation and there is economic activity there. But they will find so much black hate that I will be surprised if they survive because the black hate is real. It's a real thing. Don't ignore it. It is a real thing. Go and research it and you will see it. Blacks don't like other blacks to improve. They don't like to see other blacks grow. And that is something that the black community have to sort out among themselves. And black people need to fuck these black terrorists up. They must not tolerate that shit from them. Because this young man, in two or three or four years time, he may have a very big shop if the black community allows him to have it. But no, the fucking idiots, they would rather see a migrant do it and take all the money out of South Africa and take the job opportunities out of South Africa. We know it. If they open these immigrants, if they open the shop, they only employ immigrants. They bring their own immigrants in, illegal. To work for them. Blacks are their own fucking worst enemy. Now I'm going to show you an example of what I'm talking about. I live in a little valley outside the city and a few years back my neighbor started a game processing operation and I was at first quite intrigued by the fact that he did it outside of town. And then I talked with him and I spent some time there and I watched his operation and I could understand why he did it because he had to have a room for the game to walk free as his stock. And his business started growing slowly but surely and the local community started buying from them because it's cheaper to go there than to go into town. It's closer. Then he started to keep other meat as well. He started off only with game and then he started keeping beef and sheep and pork and chicken and things like that. And more and more of the locals started buying them. Then we saw people drive out from town to him to come and buy. And I loved it to see his business grow. And then a while back, then I saw he was having some form of a nursery there, selling plants and shit like that. And then I saw there was pastries that was baked by a woman here in the valley that was selling there. And slowly but surely the game butchery turned into a little almost a little supermarket. It was fantastic. The latest move is there's now a hardware outlet there and the hardware outlet is called It's Van Als, something of everything and it is fantastic. They've got good stuff there, they've got the stuff that the people in the valley need and so and it is close to us. We don't need to drive into town to go and get the stuff. Fantastic. And we've got one of our local guys here in the valley that is he's a journalist, but he's also an entrepreneur. And what he has done, 
is years now, sort of started, I don't want to call it an online business, because it's not really an online business. What he does is he sources specific items like USB driven little desktop air conditioners to use when the fucking load shedding is on you like tonight and he started off with a torch this thing that you see there it's a rechargeable torch but it also acts as a power bank and he just puts his image on our valley group and if you're interested, you contact him and you order and he makes the orders up and then he so brings it in from Joburg or from wherever. So he's actually got a little online site, offline, providing the service for me. I can also go and source a thing and order it and it comes here after two or three weeks from fuck knows where. But... He does it for all of us and he gets really nice stuff. And I've seen now people asking for other things and he sources it. So he has the connections and the contacts and the abilities to do it. And the people support him. There's a woman here that has got a succulent and wildflower little nursery. Fantastic. There's a woman here that is baking pies and pastries. Fantastic. A guy opened almost like a spaza shop. I'm going to call it a spaza shop. And he started off with a normal thing, cigarettes and cold drink and candles and cuck like that. All those little things that, yeah, if you have to go to town, I got to drive four or five kilometers to get there and back and it. So if I have to go into town to buy a packet of candles, that candles cost me a fortune. So he has that. And then I saw what he did later on. He started on certain days. He was offering takeaways, boerewors rolls and things like that. Fantastic. But the most important thing is the community are supporting these people in the communities. Because these little entrepreneurs... They give us some independence from the corporate cabal. And that corporate cabal is fucking dangerous. I've spoken about it many times in my skip marks. So, funny with his butchery and the girl with her uh, hardware thing and this and books with his, let's call it his offline shop of specific items contributes to our security because when that day comes that you cannot go to town you know you can get a packet of boerewors at Fani's place you know you can get a bottle of gas you can get your gas bottle refilled at its funnels you can get a torch from Bucks you can get stuff cold drink or a bread or something from the spaza shop. It is there. And that is the difference between white people and black people. White people support one another. And that is how they build businesses and how they build things to grow and become successful. The blacks, black hate runs rampant. If you look on that Twitter thread, the people were tearing into that young man. I was so disgusted. But it is a case of culture. My sons will not dare to talk shit about one of these little businesses in the valley in front of me because they know I will rip their fucking ears off. I don't tolerate shit like that. I'm a guy that believes in small businesses and believes in people must assist one another. I buy from small businesses and I have a principle that I do not divert from it. 
If I walk into a small business, point number one, I don't ask for a discount because the profit that that guy makes there will be feeding a family most probably. So I don't ask for discount. I look at the price and I do a calculation for myself and say, yeah, I can afford this and it's still going to be cheaper for me than to drive into town. You also don't ask for credit at a small business because that guy is financing his stock from his own money. So don't ask for credit. Recap, don't ask for discount, don't ask for credit. Not from a small business entrepreneur. Don't do it. And then the third thing is, give him the benefit of the doubt. Rather pay a few cents or a few rands more in his little shop and you know that money is applied to bettering people's lives. Then you go and buy it cheaper at the supermarket where all those profits there are going where? We have no fucking clue. No clue. So that's what we should look at. And then there's something more from Bucks. He's got these knives and he can engrave them for you with your name and things on it. He also makes these things, that is pens, that is made out of indigenous wood. And then he's got this, which is quite interesting, these spices. And he's got a whole range of braai spices. And then we have this. This guy, he can do services to vehicles. The big thing is this, Benny is here in the valley. My own neighbor is a good electrical contractor and he has just completed a total solar installation to take his house off the grid so he knows about solar. I support him. I've been supporting him since the day he came into the valley. And yes, sometimes it's a little bit more expensive than other contractors. But he's my neighbor. That is why I support him. Because tomorrow night, I may be in deep shit here. And I can call him. And he will come and help me. I know that. So, we look after one another. And that is something that is very important. And I must say, I'm glad to know that it is a cultural element in the white communities. But I have to refer back to that young black man. And I'm telling all of you, keep your eyes open for those instances and call it out when you see black hate. Call it out. Black hate is real and it is fucking dangerous for the black communities and by definition for all of us in South Africa. Can you imagine if all over our country black entrepreneurs were running the spaza shops in the black communities? What difference that would have made? What difference? But in any case, I hope you enjoyed this one and think about this black hate shit. It's not cool. And I'm beginning to get hot. <laughs> There's no air conditioning. Fuck Eskom. <laughs> but I have to adapt or die. And uh, give me a like and give me a subscribe and share the thing. Have a great evening.